University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Two colleges of the University of London are playing each other tonight with a place in the second round for whichever proves the stronger. The losers might earn the right to play again if their score is among the four highest losing totals in these first-round matches. The London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine is making only its second appearance on this programme. It was founded in 1899 by Sir Patrick Manson, the Scottish physician whose discovery that mosquitoes spread the disease filariasis led him to be regarded as the father of tropical medicine. It's located in Bloomsbury, including its Gower Street premises, which are home to numerous mosquito colonies, some of which need to be fed with the blood of a human volunteer. Tonight's team have told us that some people are just into parasites. And indeed, their favourite parasite is the bot fly. Whether they brought one with them tonight as a mascot, it's, uh, it's impossible to tell from this side of the studio. With an average age of 27, representing around 4,000 students, let's meet the LSHTM team. Hi, I'm Andy Taylor. I'm originally from Oxford and I'm studying for a Masters in Tropical Medicine and International Health. Hi, my name is Rebecca Glover. I'm originally from Ottawa, Canada, and I'm studying for an MSc in the control of infectious disease. Let's meet their captain. Hi, I'm Sarah Legrand. I'm from London, and I'm studying for a Masters in Epidemiology. Hi, I'm Anjana Bappa. I'm from the Wirral, and I'm studying for a Masters in Tropical Medicine and International Health. Their opponents are playing for the London School of Economics, which was founded after a discussion over breakfast in 1894 between the Fabians, Beatrice and Sidney Webb, Graham Wallace and George Bernard Shaw. It was established to further the Fabian aims of reforming society by researching issues of poverty and inequality. It became the university's faculty of economics in 1900. The father of the welfare state, William Beveridge, was its director between the wars. Clement Attlee taught there as did Ramsay MacDonald, and its students have included John F. Kennedy, Mick Jagger and Ed Miliband. Representing nearly 9,000 students and with an average age of 26, let's meet the LSE team. Hi, I'm Peter Sims. I'm from Edmonton, Canada, and I'm doing a PhD in economic history. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Moe. I'm from Calgary, also in Canada, and I'm studying for a master's degree in econometrics and mathematical economics. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm Jimmy Chen. I'm from Colchester in Essex, and I'm studying for a bachelor's degree in government and history. Hi, I'm Pedro Franco de Campos Pinto. I'm originally from Brazil. I'm studying for a PhD in economics. Well, if you don't know the rules, you shouldn't be here, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. After his death, it was 2,000 years before the world produced any philosopher who could be regarded as approximate... Well, it's H.T.M. Legrand. Aristotle. Correct, yes. <laughs> the assessment of Bertrand Russell. Right, your bonuses, the first set of bonuses in tonight's contest are on Caribbean cuisine. Firstly, for five points. Made with a porridge of cornmeal and okra, cuckoo and flying fish, is the national dish of which country the easternmost of the Lesser Antilles. Barbados? I'm not sure. I'm not sure Granada. 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 Just guessing. Granada? No, it's Barbados. Oh. A soup or stew made with leaf vegetables, coconut, crab or pork, callaloo, is often described as the national dish of which island country situated between Grenada and Venezuela? Mm. Jamaica. No, it's Trinidad and Tobago. And lastly, ackee and saltfish is generally regarded as the national dish of which island of the Greater Antilles? I think that's Jamaica. Jamaica. That is Jamaica, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. What term was coined in 1958 by the sociologist and Labour politician Michael Young to denote a form of government in which... LSHTM Legrand. Meritocracy? Yes. Well. Right, you get a second set of bonuses uh, there on poets' responses to war and revolution. Bliss was it in that dawn to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. Which poet wrote those lines and to which event was he referring? I don't know. That, I guess, would be Byron. Byron in no, the group or of Independent. Or in the group. I think it is the French Revolution. 
Are you sure? Ash? No, I'm not sure. That's a yeah. guess. But it's an education. Okay. Is it Wordsworth and the French Revolution? It was, yes. Well In 1914, which poet wrote, Now God be thanked who has matched us with his hour and caught our youth and wakened us from sleeping? Rupert Brooke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rupert Brooke. Correct. Yes. Primarily associated with the First World War, which poet wrote in May 1940, Now, multifold, let Britain's patient power be proven within us for the world to see? Secret Sassoon? Yeah, that's what I was Secret Sassoon. Correct. Yes. Ten points for this starter question. In vertebrate anatomy, which bone has a broad quadrangular upper part called the manubrium that articulates with the clavicle? Well, that's HTM buttons. Sternum. Sternum, breastbone is correct, yes. <laughs> this set of bonuses are on the Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev. Firstly, for five points, the Sanskrit word for the number one, Mendeleev used what three-letter prefix to name undiscovered elements whose existence he predicted? Is it un, 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 Mendeleev's Ecker Aluminium was later discovered in 1875 and given what name after a large historical region of Western Europe? Germanian? Try Germanian? No, it was Gallium. And finally, Mendeleev gave the name Ecker Silicon to another undiscovered element on its discovery in 1886. Clemens Winkler gave it what name after the Roman name of his native country? Helveticum? Helveticum? No, that was Germanium. Oh. Right, we're going to take a picture around now. Your picture starter is a graphic representation of the title of an opera in the style of mobile phone emoticons. Ten points if you can give me the opera's title, please. LSHTM Le Grant. Barbara Seville. I know, it is embarrassing, isn't it? But you're <laughs> quite right. <laughs> right, your bonus is three more sets of emoticons representing the titles of operas, each of which is based on a work of art or literature. For five points, I want the name of the opera and the composer in each case. Firstly, this opera by a Russian composer. Makes progress. Yeah, Rake's progress. We don't know. Oh, maybe. What is it? Rack. Rake's progress. Try that. Who just chose Rake's progress? Bye. Oh. Come on. Shostakovich. Shostakovich? No, it's by Stravinsky. Secondly, this Russian opera. Queen of Spades. Any idea here? Queen of Spades. Russian. Queen of Spades by Shostakovich. No, it's by Tchaikovsky. Oh. Bad luck. Finally, this English <laughs> opera. Turn and Screw by Britain. Correct. Ten points for this last question. Which novelist wrote a work whose chapters include what snobs admire, military snobs and party-giving snobs? Known as the Book of Snobs, it was first serialised in Punch from 1846, around the same time as his novel, Vanity Fair. LSE Chen. Thackeray. Thackeray is right, yes. Right, your first set of bonuses, LSE, are on triptychs. On display in the Prado, which triptych by Hieronymus Bosch depicts God, Adam and Eve on its left panel and the torments of hell on the right? Its central panel depicts life's pleasures and gives its name to the entire piece. Temptations... Life's pleasures... Temptations of... The garden, the, the garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden? That's the Garden of Earthly Delights. <laughs> Secondly, on display in the Cathedral of Our Lady in Antwerp, the raising of the cross is a triptych completed in around 1611 by which Flemish artist associated with the Baroque? Rubens. Is that Rubens? Is that, who else is Flemish? 
Who? Jura? I think it was Rubens. No, I don't know. Jura? No, it was Rubens. First exhibited in 1945 and now in Tate, Britain. Three studies for figures at the base of a crucifixion is a major work by which Dublin-born painter? Francis Bacon. Oh, yeah, I like Francis that. Francis Bacon? Correct. Yeah. Ten points for this. Listen carefully. In 1769, a three-day festival in Stratford-upon-Avon to celebrate the life of William Shakespeare is believed to have been largely responsible for putting the town on the literary map and for cementing the playwright's reputation. Which actor staged it? Uh, L.I.C. Chen. Correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on a political figure. Firstly, who succeeded Lord Elgin as Viceroy of India in 1899 and ordered a major restoration of the decaying Taj Mahal? He was Foreign Secretary from 1919 to 24. Arthur Balfour? No, that was Lord Curzon. Curzon resigned as Viceroy in 1905 after a disagreement with which Commander-in-Chief of the Indian Army, a major figure of the Sudan campaign and the South African War? Uh, Kitchener. Correct. Proposed by Curzon in 1920 when he was Foreign Secretary, the Curzon Line demarcated the border between Russia and which country? Poland. Yeah, Poland. Po Poland? Correct. Ten points for this. Give both answers promptly. Which two neighbouring planets of the solar system have the lowest and highest geometric albedos? That is, they are the darkest and palest of the planets. LSHTM Buppet. Uh, Mars and Earth. Nope. One of you, Buzz? LSE Mo. Mars and Jupiter. No, it's Mercury and Venus. Ten points for this. Starting in the early 19th century, which country's golden age of art is associated with the painter Christopher Wilhelm Eckersberg and his pupil Kristen Kerbke, as well as the sculptor Bertel Torvaldsen? LSHTM Legrand. Denmark? Correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on lines from films of the 1930s. In each case, Listen to the lines and name both the film and the actor who speaks them. Firstly, from a film of 1931, listen to them. Children of the Night, what music they make. Gone with the Wind? No, it's Bela Lugosi in Dracula. Oh. From a film of 1930, secondly, one morning I shot an elephant in my pyjamas. How he got in my pyjamas, I don't know. <laughs> That's a Max. Yeah, no, that well. Is it Duck Soup? I think. I don't know. Any idea? Duck Soup? Uh, no, it was Groucho Marx in Animal Crackers. And finally, from a film of 1939, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Uh, that's uh, Casablanca, but yeah. I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that Gone with the Wind? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Gone with the Wind. Who is it? Gone with the Wind. Um, the guy. The guy. Rhett Butler. Yeah, the guy. Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind? The actor, please. Rhett Butler. No, that's the character. It's Clark Gable in Gone with the Wind. Sorry. Right, we're going to take a music round now. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of popular music. For ten points, all you have to do is to name the band performing. We were at a party. LSE Sims. The B-52s. It is the B-52s, Rock Lobster. Now, the B-52's lead singer, Fred Schneider, is noted for his Sprechgesang style of singing, literally spoken voice. For your bonuses, three more pieces of pop music performed by singers in that style. Five points for each band or artist you can name. Or the Black Stripes, or who? Excuse me. Um, the Arctic Monkeys. <laughs> no, it's the Pixies. Monkey oh. gone to heaven. <laughs> Secondly, in the deserts of Sudan and the gardens of Japan. 
Pass. That's Ian Dury, hit me with your rhythm stick. And finally... No way, not today. It makes you wonder what it meant to them. And this hollow feeling grows and grows and grows and grows. And you want to call your mother and say, Mother. Ah, I have no idea, I'm sorry. Maybe I seem to have left an important part of my brain. Pass. Somewhere. Pass. Pulp. Right, ten points for this. What surname links the Scottish bacteriologist who shared the 1945 Nobel Prize for Medicine with Florey and Chain, the director of Gone with the Wind, and the authors of News from Tartary and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? LSHTM Legrand. Hope Kirk. Hmm? LSE Mo. Fleming. Fleming is right, yes. Bonuses this time on Internet and Technology Corporations, LSE. The founder of a non-profit support community for women, Sheryl Sandberg became chief operating officer of which Internet Corporation in 2008? Facebook. Correct. Formerly an executive at Google, Marissa Mayer became CEO of which corporation in 2012, making high-profile acquisitions including Sumley and Tumblr? Yahoo. Correct. In 2011, Ginny Romerty became the first female CEO in the 100-year history of which major U.S. technology corporation? Is it IBM? James um, Roger? IBM? Is that...? No, it's probably IBM, I'm thinking. I think it's IBM. It's lasted a long time. Yeah, yeah. Why the IBM or GE? Because they're both very long. General Electric. No, it's IBM. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which evolutionary hypothesis suggests that species must continually evolve to survive and maintain their relative positions in the same ecosystem? LSHTM Legrand. Red Queen hypothesis. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on genetics. First noticed in petunias when biologists attempting to deepen the purple colour of the petals instead produced white flowers, what a general term denotes the means by which small RNA molecules can provide a regulatory mechanism for gene expression? I think it's more likely to be imprinting. Don't. Imprinting? No, it's RNA interference. Secondly, what Greek-derived term denotes the region at the end of each chromosome containing repetitive DNA sequences that protect against degradation and crossover? Telomere. Correct. Which amino acid is present at the start of the protein-coding DNA sequence for every gene in all eukaryotes? Oh, guess, guess an amino acid. Is it amino acid lysine? Yeah. Guess it. Yeah, lysine. Lysine? No, it's methionine. Ten points for this. Which class of organic compounds is characterised by the presence of a carbonyl group in which the carbon atom is covalently bonded to an oxygen atom? Acetone being a common example. LSEMO. Ketone. Correct. <laughs> Your bonus is wrong. World capitals. In each case, identify the city from its location. All three have names that begin and end with the same letter. Firstly, a city close to the Greenwich Meridian and around midway between Abidjan and Lagos. Accra, yeah, Accra. Accra. Correct. Secondly, a city roughly midway between Odessa and Damascus. Jerusalem. I've already did. Istanbul. Ankara. 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 Correct. Finally, a city roughly midway between Khartoum in Sudan and Sana'a in Yemen. Addis Ababa. No, it's Asmara. Ten points for this. When written in Roman numerals and with the addition of the letter O, which three-digit decimal number spells the name of the muse of history? LSHTM Buppet. 100. No, anyone want to buzz from... LSHM. 550. No, it's 151, Cleo. Right, ten points for this. In 1755, Pascal Pauli founded a republic on which Mediterranean uh, island? LSE Sims. Corsica. Corsica's correct. <laughs>
That gives you the lead, and you get a set of bonuses on Europe in the ninth century. The Pactum Ludovicianum was an agreement of 817 between the papacy and which son of Charlemagne? I need his regnal name and number or by name. <laughs> Ludwig the First? No, it's Louis the First or Louis the Fair. I believe he is called Ludwig the First in German, but since you were given a form of words very close to that in the question, I can't accept it, I'm afraid. Oh. Oh. Now in northern France, which city gives its name to a treaty of 843 that divided the Carolingian Empire? Mm. It's Amiens. Um, was that Amiens? It's Amiens. I think Treaty of Amiens. Amiens? No, it's Verdun. And finally, the Peace of Wedmore is a name given to an agreement of 878 between the Danish king Guthrum and which king of Wessex? Um, Alfred. Alfred? Alfred the Great, Great. is yeah. correct, yes. <laughs> right, we're going to take a second picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see a painting of a beach scene. Ten points if you can name the artist. LSHTM Legrand. Whistler. No. Anyone like to buzz from the LSE? Ah. LSE Mo. Mary Cassatt. No, it's Monet. So we'll take the picture bonuses shortly, but ten points at stake for this starter question. Fingers on the buzzers. Around two miles southwest of the source of the Severn, a stream on the eastern slopes of Plinlimmon in mid Wales is the source of which river? It joins the Severn estuary near Chepstow. Ah. LSE Chem. Why? The why is correct, yes. Now, you get a set of picture bonuses, LSE. Three more beach scenes by notable artists. I want the name of the artist in each case, please, firstly. This looks pretty modern. Like Picasso? Or yeah, French? that's... A, you can get maybe Picasso, early yeah, Picasso. Yeah, yeah, early Picasso sounds right. Picasso? No, that's by Van Gogh. Oh, okay. Secondly, who's this by? It's too impressionistic. Yeah, maybe it's like Mane? Mane? Mane, Mane would Mane, 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 Mane. No, that's by Renoir, Le Lavandou, and finally... Ah, oh, there's also impressionistic French, maybe? Seurat, maybe? Yeah. Seurat? Who? Seurat? Yeah. Oh, Manet? You can find Manet again. Manet. Up to you. Manet. Manet is right. Blowing. Ten points for this. In 1768, who became the first president of the Royal Academy of Arts? His paintings include The Age of Innocence... LSHT and Buppet. Joshua Reynolds. Correct. Your bonuses are on the Bible translator, William Tyndall. Tyndall's English translation of the New Testament was first published in full in 1526 in which German city? It gives its name to an assembly or diet of 1521 at which Martin Luther answered charges of heresy. Worms. Correct. Later canonised by the Roman Catholic Church, which English political figure described Tyndale as a hellhound in the kennel of the devil? Thomas Moore. Yeah. Thomas Moore. Correct. Tyndale was arrested by the imperial authorities and executed near which present-day European capital in 1536? Brussels. 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 Could be Brussels. Brussels. Or Amsterdam. Um, yeah. What do you think? I have a Oh, no, because it wouldn't be. Come on. Um, yes. Brussels. Correct. <laughs> You seem so pleasantly astonished when you get it right. <laughs> right, ten points for this. In physics, which Greek letter signifies the ratio of isothermal to adiabatic compressibility, or equivalently, the ratio of heat capacity at constant pressure to heat capacity at constant volume? LSHTM Buppet. Lambda. No, anyone like to buzz from LSE? Uh, LSE Mo. Mu. No, it's Gamma. Ten points for this. Sister Helen Prejean, a Roman Catholic nun, is the author of which work of 1990... LSHTM Legrand. Dead Man Walking. Correct. <laughs> That's given you the lead, and your bonuses are on asexual reproduction in fungi. <laughs> in phycomycetes, or mycetes, such as mucor, what term denotes the well-developed spherical capsules carried on aerial hyphae that contain many asexual spores? Come on, let's have it, please. Sporocysts. 
No, they're sporangia. <laughs> From the Greek for dust, what term denotes fungal spores asexually produced by constriction of sterigmata and not enclosed in a sporangium? Can you do dust? Greek? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just guess. <laughs> Pass. They're conidia. Mm -hmm. And finally, in yeast, what term denotes asexual reproduction in which a new cell is produced as an outgrowth of the parent? Which was not budding. Yeah. Budding. Correct. Yeah. Two and a half minutes to go, ten points for this. Answer clearly and audibly as soon as your name is called. What word is spelt by concatenating the silent letters in the words honour, biscuit and mnemonic? LSE Chen. Hun. H-U-N. No, and you want to buzz from the... Uh, LSHTM Legrand. Hum. Hum is correct, yes, H-U-M, yes. <laughs> right, your set of bonuses now are on marine mammals. In zoology, the family Focinidae has what common name from the Latin meaning roughly pigfish? Seal. 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 No, it's the porpoise. The term pinnipedia encompasses three families of carnivorous sea mammals, true seals, sea lions and which other? Walruses. Correct. Which horny keratinous substance forms a series of comb-like plates that filter and trap prey in the upper jaws of true whales? Baleen. Baleen. Baleen is correct. Right, we're going to take another start question. The Economist newspaper was founded in 1843 as a voice against what protectionist legislation introduced in 18... LSE Sims. Sims. The Corn Laws? Correct. These bonuses, LSE, are on Shakespeare's Hamlet. In each case, identify the speaker of the following lines. Firstly, murder most foul, as in the best it is. Claudius? Sure. Yeah. Claudius? No, it's the ghost, old Hamlet. Mm. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. That's Hamlet himself. I think that's... Yeah. Hamlet? No, that's Marcellus. And finally, good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels it's, sing it's, thee to thy it's, rest. It's the final guy who comes to announce things. What's his yeah. name? The Rosencrantz or Guildenstern. No, 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 no. The messenger. It's, it's the prince. It's the messenger who comes afterwards. What's his name? Um, Hamlet. Horatio. Horatio? Yeah. Horatio is correct, yes. <laughs> right, another start question. In 1980, the novelist Marguerite Yourcenar became the first woman to be elected to which learned body? LSE Mo. The Académie Française. Correct. <laughs> Get these bonuses, you'll take the lead again. They're on paleoanthropology. Meaning southern ape, what generic name is given to those species of extinct bipedal hominids that include Lucy, discovered in Ethiopia? Her skeleton is around 3.2 million years old. Oh, Nice. And that was gone. The LSE have 140. The London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine have 150. <laughs> well, you were close, but no cigar. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much for joining us. Uh, 140, you might come back as one of the highest scoring losing teams. Who knows? It's certainly higher than some losing. It's higher, frankly, than some winning teams we've had so far. <laughs> uh, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, well done. You're a delightful team, despite your apparent <laughs> astonishment when you got something right. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, I hope you can join us next time. But until then, it's goodbye from the London School of Economics. Goodbye. 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 It's goodbye from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>